What type of immunological memory is created by exposure to SARS-CoV-2? How long do those memories last? And what implications does that have on the development and longevity of vaccine-induced protection? Hi, and welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Ashley Hagen, Science Communications Specialist at ASM, and today we're discussing a topic that underpins many of the critical questions that continue to circulate about COVID-19 vaccine development, the kinetics of immunological memory to SARS-CoV-2, and the behavior of key immunological players involved in those processes. Immune memory is the source of protective immunity against future infection. In a broad sense, the term refers to the immune system's ability to recognize and mount a successful defense against a specific pathogen. A consortium of immune cells including antibodies, B cells, CD8 T cells, and CD4 T cells are equipped with the necessary materials to accomplish this task, but they're dependent on some initial instructions to do so. Those instructions can be delivered via natural infection, vaccination, or therapeutic interventions that introduce the body to a pathogen-specific antigen, which then in turn triggers the immune response. We're beginning to gain a better understanding of how the immune system responds to SARS-CoV-2. B cells make antibodies in response to SARS-CoV-2 antigens like the spike protein and N protein, and the primary role of neutralizing antibodies is to capture unbound virus and keep it from infecting the cell. In a previous Microbial Minutes linked in the description below, we discussed a study from the Journal of Clinical Microbiology which demonstrated an important correlation between neutralizing antibodies and protection against secondary SARS-CoV-2 infection. Similarly, Treatment with monoclonal antibodies prior to infection has been shown to offer passive immunity in animals, and in November, the FDA issued emergency use authorization to two developers of monoclonal antibodies, Regneron and Eli Lilly, based on interim analyses of the company's randomized phase two trials, which showed reduced rates of hospitalization in patients who were administered monoclonal antibody treatment after infection. But antibodies aren't the only cell type that mediates immunity to COVID-19. Teach cells have been associated with less severe disease and seem to play an important role in the clearance of SARS-CoV-2 infection. CD8 T cells, also known as cytotoxic or killer T cells, signal virus-infected cells to self-destruct and thereby limit the spread of the virus, while CD4 T cells or helper T cells help instigate and shape adaptive immune responses. T helper cells are involved in the activation of B cells and cytotoxic T cells, as well as the production and release of cytokines. Large numbers of antibodies in T cells are mobilized during active infection, but after the pathogen is cleared, those numbers begin to slowly decline. Some immune cells will die while others differentiate into memory B and T cells, and low levels of antibodies may continue to circulate in the blood. Memory cells are antigen-specific and can be quickly converted back to large numbers of effector cells in order to provide a rapid immune response upon re-exposure to a pathogen they recognize. A study published in Cell in June and further publicized by National Geographic in August reported robust memory T-cell responses months after infection, even in mild and asymptomatic patients who had no evidence of circulating SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. In a previous Microbial Minutes, also linked in our description, we discussed a couple of preliminary studies attempting to understand how the immune system responds to asymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infection. One of these studies reported that 38.1% of the evaluated asymptomatic patients did not produce neutralizing antibodies at all. The other found that less than 45% seroconverted by day 30 post-PCR diagnosis. T-cell and antibody responses typically appear and work in tandem. More research is needed, but both MERS and SARS-CoV have been shown to induce potent memory T-cell responses that persist while antibody responses wane. And the fact that SARS-CoV-2-specific memory T-cells are detectable even in seronegative cases may indicate that there's some protective immunity formed in individuals with a history of asymptomatic or mild COVID-19, even when neutralizing antibodies aren't formed. Importantly, the kinetics and duration of immune memory are not usually predictable during initial infection or after an infection is immediately cleared. In fact, experts recommend assessing immune responses over an interval of six months or more in order to gain perspective about long-term immunity to a particular pathogen. That's because 
Once an antigen is introduced, it takes time for the body to produce functional immune cells and even more time for immunological memories to form, which is why COVID-19 vaccines do not deliver immediate protection and why a two-dose regimen is recommended for many of the circulating and developing vaccine candidates. The body must recognize the antigen, induce cells to properly respond, and begin building a cellular arsenal. And when the second dose of vaccine is administered, a larger, faster immune response is triggered, And, as the antigen is cleared from the system, immune memories begin to form. According to current vaccine regimens for COVID-19, this process is complete 28 days after the first dose or 7 days after the second dose of vaccine is administered. A recent preprint, released on November 16, 2020, became the first of its kind to perform a comprehensive analysis of the kinetics of the various components of immune memory. Blood samples from 185 COVID-19 cases were analyzed. Most samples were taken at a single time point, but 38 patients provided longitudinal samples that included two to four time points taken over a period of several months. All samples were obtained between 6 to 240 days post-symptom onset, 41 of which were taken from patients who were six months or longer post-infection. Disease severity ranged from asymptomatic to severe, but most patients reported mild symptoms of disease, and the age range of the cohort was 19 to 81 years. Researchers found that even though diverse immune responses are characteristic of COVID-19, almost all individuals develop durable SARS-CoV-2 immune memory. They also determined that the individual components of immune memory have complex relationships with one another, and each exhibits its own distinct kinetics. IgG antibody titers corresponding to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein spike receptor binding domain, or RBD, and nucleocapsid protein were evaluated and found to be stable for almost all patients from 20 to 240 days post-infection. In fact, 90% of patients tested positive for spike IgG antibodies six to eight months after infection. Further analysis of SARS-CoV-2 PSV neutralization titers indicated that 90% of patients were also seropositive for neutralizing antibodies. Notably, antibody levels were diverse amongst individuals, and factors that seemed to impact such heterogeneity were disease severity and gender. More severe cases typically had higher antibody titers, as did male patients compared to females. However, these trends did not hold true for other components of immune memory, and therefore disease severity and gender do not fully explain the characteristic heterogeneity of immune responses to COVID-19 that we continue to observe. Memory B cells corresponding to spike protein, RBD, and N protein were also analyzed and found to steadily increase over the first five months post-infection. In other words, spike-specific B cells were more abundant six months after infection than they were at one month. The data from 29 out of 36 of the longitudinal samples supported these kinetics, and no apparent half-life was indicated five months after infection. Researchers concluded that B-cell memory appears to be robust and long-lasting. Researchers observed that CD4 and CD8 T-cells declined with a half-life of 3 to 5 months. Notably, these results are consistent with data reported for other acute viruses like yellow fever. SARS-CoV T-cells have been detected 17 years after initial infection, which suggests that the decay of SARS-CoV-2 T-cells may slow or become more stable after the first six months post-infection. 50% of samples were positive for CD8 T-cells, and 89% were positive for CD4 T-cells six months or more after infection. Notably, at one to two months post-infection, 59% of cases were positive for all five immune memory responses. By five or more months post-infection, 40% were still positive for all five out of five, and 96% were positive for three out of five memory responses. Overall, these results indicate that durable immunity against SARS-CoV-2 is possible in most individuals. So here are a few key takeaways from today's session about immunological memory. Development of protective immunity takes time and depends on complex relationships between multiple cellular components that exhibit distinct kinetics and behavior. SARS-CoV-2-specific T-cells have been detected in the absence of circulating antibodies. 
It's likely that most individuals develop durable immunity against SARS-CoV-2, and evidence shows that these immune responses may persist for six months or more post-infection, which is good news. That's the latest on what's hot in the microbial sciences, but we need to remember that this data is preliminary. Truly understanding long-term immunity to SARS-CoV-2 can only be accomplished with time and additional data. Don't forget to subscribe to ASM's YouTube channel and ring the bell for notifications every time we have a Microbial Minutes update. I'm Ashley Hagen. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I will talk to you next time.